everybody and welcome back to Slide By. It's a little bit of a break between videos there. I was on vacation in Disney World for the first time, so I apologize uh, for the delay in getting a, another video up. But this is the one I've been thinking about for a while, and uh, we're going to get right into it. So let's talk about Create Amplifiers. So what are Create Amplifiers? Well, they're very low-budget amplifiers, and I consider them the Pawn Shop Star uh, or rock stars, the, the pawn shop rock star, the thrift shop uh, superstar, they are just everywhere. You'll find them throughout all the Midwest, anywhere I've ever gone in the, uh, in the Midwest. Um, I found these amplifiers. And it's, it's funny because everybody I know, at least in, you know, 28 years old and up has owned one of these amplifiers. You know, you, 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 the younger generation coming up playing, uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm older than I look. Uh, <laughs> the, we, we've all owned them, uh, but the younger generation coming up, they are not going to get to experience create amplifiers, more than likely, unless they pick them up at a thrift shop, which, hey, there are so many out there, you might, you, maybe you will, maybe you'll own one. So what is Crate? They are budget. They are a very much defunct company. <laughs> they are not really in business. I've heard the name is still owned and could be resurrected. I don't know. I don't think it ever will. Um, but they they produced a lot of different amps. I think they produced it, you know solid state and valve and you know different uh, hybrids of the two and all that. From my understanding, there were some of those. They started off as uh, St. Louis uh, music based company. And uh, I actually owned a St. Louis produced, or St. Louis, I always say St. Louis, I don't, I don't know for sure which way locals prefer to say it. But anyway, I had one, an amplifier, uh, or not an amplifier, a cabinet, a 4x12 cabinet. That was a 120 watt cab made in St. Louis, U.S. made. Really sweet sounding cab. I don't know if I'll ever get that thing working again or even manage to get here, so we'll see. Uh, but that was an excellent cabinet. Oh my goodness. Mwah, just kiss. <laughs> Beautiful tone. Anyway, this was actually, this is the XT30RC from Crate, and it has a solo with gain shape, which is very much like the Black Star uh, ISF, is, at least in theory, it doesn't sound nearly as good, um, level, and then you've got your clean channel with your uh, volume low, mid, high, and reverb, which that control, that EQ controls kind of both, um, with an independent volume uh, for each of those, so level and solo, volume and clean. Now, I will say that clean, channels volume knob is very crackly and very messed up and will cut out and that's one reason why i went ahead this was actually the only amp when i moved into this house about three four years ago now <laughs> this was my only amp i had actually given it to my younger brother and he gave it back because he was he we got into guitar playing so that wasn't for him and handed it back uh you know uh who i'm talking about go check out the, the calamity he has a ton of awesome content such as like gaming and you know, collecting and, you know, different forms of media like that. He's, his channel's awesome. Go check it out. Way better of a YouTuber than I am. <laughs> but I had given this to him. He gave it back. And I, I knew if I gave it to him, he'd take care of it. I, I trusted him. And he ended up giving, I, I got his guitar from him. We made a deal on that. And then he gave this back to me just because he didn't need any more. It's always found its way back. It's always been reliable, except for now the volume knob is going out. So that's what pushed me to getting the acoustic G120 because I was missing my crate house deck. I knew this thing wasn't going to last a whole lot longer, more than likely, on that volume knob before I had to do something important to fix it. And at least if I kept playing around with it anyway, which so far so good. But that's part of this. That's you know that's one of those things I'm going to discuss with this video. Um, so I ended up getting the Kuzu G120 and replacing this, but I've always had this as a standby. And this thing takes pedals excellent on that clean channel, but they are budget. Like anything budget, things will eventually, it, it won't last forever. Um, sometimes, sometimes you will be surprised. You know, I've had these budget guitars, most of them have actually been excellent. Um, and they probably will stand the test of time. But amplifiers, I've had, like I had a Rogue Bass amp, but just when they just died. And that, that is just how it works if a lot of these, especially solid state amplifiers, for transistors feel bad, they're just bad. That's just what happens and you just move on. Um, you might be able to find someone to repair, repair it, but often it's just more cost effective just to replace the thing. And that's what I did um, with that. And this thing hasn't gone out yet and I it might keep going. This is a 2004 model, but is it even worth buying something like this anymore? Maybe. 
uh, we got this from our uh, my guitar uh, teacher slash friend. Um, he, I think it, my parents probably paid set, what, 75 bucks or something like that for it. It was an in-between amp between my 10 watt uh, Squire frontman amplifier and my um, Raven RG60 that you've seen on here before. This wasn't a big amp, but it was more volume. It was, had more features. And it, had, it had a chorus, built-in chorus, which is awesome. I let you hear a little bit of that. And that, that, is, that was cool for me because I didn't really have a whole lot of experience with that. So I got my first taste of that. I just had the MP3 input, which was awesome because I used to play a lot. Of, um, I would plug in my MP3 player after everyone had one of those. And I'd plug it in there and I could put a chord in there and I could play along with Breaking Benjamin. And I did that. It, I did. I, you know, my, the guy who taught me to play bass and then taught me a bit of guitar, he didn't really like a lot of the same. We didn't like all the same music. He, he was really a child of the 80s and a guitar player of that generation and up so he liked some Alter Bridge and things like that too but I like Breaking Benjamin I like the Thousands Metal I like Corn and all that and so I taught myself to play by a lot of my own style and my own way of playing by playing along Breaking Benjamin and adding my lead lines to it so that helped me and helped form me as a guitar player a lot so this amp is deeply important to me um, in that level and I, it still sounds good you still get plenty of volume if you're just playing in you know i'm just a hobbyist guitarist i've never played professionally even very good i actually think i suck <laughs> but as far as this is concerned you know if you're just at home playing this is plenty of volume if you were going to do small gigs say a church or whatever i've done that with this you can do that um and you can get by with less or more in, in those settings but you know 30 watt amplifier is a pretty good solid solid ground for going up from a practice amp to your next level amplifier. This thing actually has a foot switch um, input on the back uh, for your effects and it also has a uh, speaker out which I've actually used with a 1x12 before. Um, I have that 1x12 it just doesn't sound very good with these so I'm probably gonna get a new amp head for that. Um, we'll, we'll show that in another video eventually hopefully. Um, I've been working on restoring that one too and it's it's looking good. It's looking really good. Uh, but yeah, you know, if, if these things are everywhere in the Midwest, you can find them at every thrift shop, every pawn store, everything has them. Um, it's, it's hilarious just how many people, again, anyone from 28 years old and up has probably owned one of these amplifiers at some point. And they are great. They are just, they, they do sound good for a budget price. They were budget when they were dropped. They're still budget today. They're not expensive amplifiers. You might find some thrift stores or pawn shops asking a little too much for them, but you might be able to walk, work that down if you decide you want one. That said, is it worth buying them at this point? I don't know. If you get a good deal and a good price on them, maybe. Maybe this is for you. you, you if you have a 75 watt 10 watt amplifier, or 75 dollar 10 watt amplifier versus 75 watt, or let me try that again. If a 75 dollar 10 watt amp, brand new, versus a 75 dollar 30 watt amplifier that is basic, has old style quarter inch headphone plugs, but has more features and more power, you're probably going to end up going with a 30 watt, even though it's old gear. And a lot of guitar stuff, old gear can last a long time, even if it's transistor or tube, whatever. It doesn't really matter. This one is coming up, I mean, this is a 2004 model. This is 18 years old, and it still works. Yeah, this volume pot might be, it's, it's a little janky now, but you know what? It still works. <laughs> I don't know how much longer, but it still has worked. So that, that tells you something. If you can get one of these in good condition and hold on to it, maybe it is worth your while to look at. But it's sad because Crate's definitely on business. They're replaced by Blackheart, and you know, that didn't make it either. And I really think for the price, they were good amplifiers. And I, I'm worried that's going to end up happening with, an acoustic, with the acoustic brand. Uh, they're trying to do, I feel like they're trying to rebrand themselves as Gamma and push that amp because uh, they've changed it into Acoustic Control Corporation, which is where they started. The original uh, that they were bought as was that, um, which you can go into that whole company history if you like. It's interesting. But it's sad to see so like Crate gone, because it was a big part of so many guitarists uh, to build mental uh, stages of their playing. I guess we're always so, still developing and still getting better, but it is, it for a lot of us, this is the beginning of 
you know, the hobby and the passion for music was usually a crate somewhere in there. And you can still start that way, you can still get them, but I think for the most part, you know, even like that Nux Mighty Light BT I showed you, that was, I got that for 50 bucks, and at 3 watts it is loud, you have so many built-in features, phone apps, modern tech is just blowing these out of the water. But if you just need a pedal platform to push volume, and you don't need a whole lot more than a small amp, but you have medium, small to medium-sized gigs you want to play in, this could be it. This Maybe this is it for you. This crate has a ton of options, too. I, I have that 4x12 that just sounded amazing, and I played on a 120-watt amp head. That was a full stack. We parsed it out, or my friend parsed it out, and I bought the lower part, uh, the lower cab, because I like the straight wall uh, cabs versus the slanted. He sold the slanted in the head, and I kept the, uh, I, I bought the, uh, <laughs> the, the straight cab, the bottom uh, half of the full stack off of him. And that thing sounded excellent. Again, that was an American made crate set up in that mm, it's beautiful sound. Anyway, uh, obviously, towards the end of the company, they were not making the United States, they were making overseas, which is fine. I don't care. That doesn't bother me at all for, for this kind of gear, especially. Um, but yeah, it is sad to see him gone. And I think there's a legacy there of. Some people disliking it, some people loving it, but overall, Crate was there for a lot of us early uh, in our, you know, passion for the instruments. So if you can find them in a good deal, yeah, it might be so worth your time to look at. If you just have basic needs needing to be met with your uh, guitar playing, um, if you don't have that, or if you just, you know, you maybe it is better just to go with a modeling app. I tried that. Um, and I end up missing my pedals yearly. Um, I tried two different modeling amps, and they can be really great, really handy, and for simple setups, just pick up and go. They're awesome. But if you really want to nitpick and get into your uh, your tone, I like having pedals. And I think cr this is a good platform for pedals. Um, I, I say that with a lot of solid state amps, because that's really what I see them as. I see them as a clean channel with a lot of volume that I can punch in a bunch of pedals and dial in my tone for myself. So, our crates still worth a look? Maybe. It just depends. I think they're becoming quickly more and more antiquated and to the point where it may just be better just to go out and buy a newer solid state amp if you're on a budget uh, or something with more built-in features. So they're getting better. I think solid state amps, I've had, I, I have two modeling amps. None of them are my favorite amp, but they work well for what they do, but they're never gonna replace pedals in my opinion. Um, at least not for me. And I think if you're interested in this sort of thing, you might look into, you know, you might look into more powerful amplifiers, um, more modern name brands and everything. You might have better luck in the long run with that. But if you already have one of these or you're in a budget and you find one at a thrift shop or pawn shop or whatever for a good price, go for it. Because really, they're not that bad. As long as it's in good condition and you can test it and make sure it still works, it'll serve you for a long time more than likely and I think a lot of people had good experiences with them I think a lot of people had some bad experiences with them with certain things going bad but I think in general most of us have had them and played them and for the most part found them at least okay if not actually liked them or loved them so guys again that's Crate Amplifiers I hope you like this video I think it touches something for a lot of uh in the heart for a lot of us guitar players who started you know last couple decades and uh, last probably decade and a half ago. So, again, thanks for watching Side Bites. Uh, again, sorry for the delay in getting that video posted. Been on vacation and that was a blast. Go check out Side Bites on Instagram. I have a lot of pictures of that and other guitar playing videos. And if you just want to hear what something sounds like real quickly, I got a bunch of playing videos on there. Um, yeah. And if you like what I'm doing, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. I don't push that, but I appreciate everybody who keeps coming back and watching these videos. And I will talk to you all soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye.